So welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be joined today by Lawrence Good. Lawrence is an amazing business coach and action coach, but with a wealth of experience over the last 25 years. Is that all right, Lawrence? <laughs> 25 years right. <laughs> in business. He's worked with a range of companies from engineering companies to security companies. Um, and he's been able to grow businesses. Um, I had thought it was up to 20 million, but Lawrence has just informed me that it's actually up to 40 million. So we're in incredible hands today for this interview. Um, and I'm going to be interviewing Lawrence and asking him what his tips are to recession proof your business during this time. So Lawrence, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'd love it if you would just tell everyone a little bit about yourself um, because um, yes, yeah, so they can get to know a bit more about, about you and your background. Okay, sure, love to. Yeah, and thanks very much for uh, having me on. Just uh, nice to be here, Shelley. Uh, to see you. Um, so it starts very poppy this year. Started uh, as a apprentice, apprenticeship, uh, an apprenticeship. Started as a writer of the office. Um, loved engineering, uh, but I quickly realised that there was a real big business in building things. So uh, I uh, climbed the ladder, took myself through lots of training, uh, all my own time as I went. Uh, but all with the uh, aim of actually running businesses. Eventually got my chance to, to run a fairly small business in the UK. Long story short, uh, we've been back to USA in the States for 10 years, worked for quite a while in the Middle East. Along the way, really spent my time uh, growing, developing other people's businesses. It was great fun, um, but realised that uh, it wasn't actually building businesses, it was actually building people. And uh, it was really the people that made me of my own skills. They're them that made me look good and, and uh, made us all successful. So, and, and that's where I realised that uh, coaching, mentoring, and the development was what I really love to do. So that's, that's the body of history of tools that can make me jealous. Fantastic, fantastic. And so the reason why we're doing this interview, Lawrence, is obviously, as you know, a lot of people and business owners have been struggling during this time with COVID. Um, and I know that you've been through a lot of different ups and downs with different businesses and still been able to continue growing and building them. And you have so much wisdom to share that I felt it'd be really good to just to ask you your thoughts around how business owners can navigate this time. So I'd, I'd love to hear a bit about what you see as being the, the biggest issues that are facing business owners right now. Okay. Um... And I suppose unprecedented times, you know, I've been through several recessions and uh, all sorts of problems with individual businesses, individual sector, but uh, this has just been so, uh, so, so holistic, so, so general across everywhere. I suppose, really, uh, the biggest issue is about adaptability. Everything has to come back to adaptability. If you go back, uh, you go back a few years, it was a bit about being difficult to survive on the business. It was about being strong enough and fast enough to outrun your competitors. Well, that, that's changed. That's changed. It's, it's, now, it's now the survival of the most adaptable. You've got to be able to uh, think on your feet and change not just the COVID, but uh, the future. Because I promise you, it's going to keep changing. It's going to change faster and faster uh, for reasons we can't even imagine now. Um, what I would say is you know, one, of the, one of the main things is to be able to diversify. A number of strings to your bow now, and I would say look at the sectors you're in. I use the policy services you offer and see if you can diversify out of a, a, a very narrow band because that's what gives you some resilience and, and, uh, and strength and the uh, and, uh, and confidence with you. Um, adaptability, also more than anything, certainly for, for um, own business, business owners who are in a business and are learning. You know, mm -hmm. um, we have a saying in action case that uh, you can't have before you knowledge. And, and, and it's absolutely true. What it means is that um, as you pick up knowledge, it's not just that you, that you use the knowledge, if you, you do talk webinars, you do online training, however you get your, your knowledge, as you get these new skills, you, you reflect on how it, how it relates to your own business. And it gives you new ideas, um, gives you new perspectives on the things that you're doing, sending off in new directions. Uh, which is going to be you've got to arrive at all your conclusions, but uh, the widest input is to make the best decisions overall. 
that that makes sense so far. Mm, Absolutely. So when you think about adapting your business and maybe broadening your base, can you give a couple of examples of of how that's, you know, how how to do that or, you know, your experience, from your experience, how you've had to do that in the past? Yeah, sure. I mean, it starts, you know, with the disaster classic, you can look at the product you've got and see what other, um, see what other markets or sectors or clients could use them. Look at the clients you've got and see what other product services that you could have used to add. So that's, that's the easiest way to start um, diversity by you're widening your portfolio, your offering to give you some stability. Um, and from there, and I'll start with that, don't go too, don't go too wide, but that's even really good start to build on and, and get the ideas rolling. Yeah, so really adapting to the, the situation and creating products and offerings that are actually going to work for the current time. For the current issues that your audience have. Yeah, absolutely. I think of marketability, okay, you know, toilet roll pasta, you know, a few weeks ago they were ultimately marketable. Well, you have to go that extreme, but I think the things that uh, you know, are really needed, really going to be needed. Um, also worth it, you know, sustainability. So you can come up with products or services which, as you ramp up the volume, have very little to the overhead. You can do a lot more with what you've already got. That yeah. means that that gives a much better chance of growth much longer into the future, and of course, you know, much better profits and margin. Um, that makes sense. That makes sense. And actually, that's quite interesting because. Um, that's exactly what I've been doing at Client Nectar. We've been, we're working on some new programs, some new offerings that um, are basically very similar to our existing offerings, but have different levels of, um, different levels of support. And so they kind of meet different budgets of what people have, but still get the result. So we're finding different ways of helping people get the result they're looking for but using sort of um, using more or less of our time effectively and involvement. I think that's, a, that's an excellent point. I think I like the idea of a ladder. You can have one with products, so you can you've got sort of an entry level, you can bring the clients in and then provide higher value. It helps them more and helps you more. Um, okay. It also widens your ability to market. The thing helps, of course, is cash flow. You know, cash flow is so important at the moment. Um, some businesses you know, very profitable, but at the moment got huge uh, cash flow problems. And I would say, um, you know, now is the time to have a, have a really good look at that. Not just what the products and services you offer, and I'd also have a look at, um, you know, renegotiating, talking to suppliers. I think now is the time to, to sort of put your expectations of renegotiating. Um, mm. Know your break even. You know, absolutely fundamental. Like, it's amazing that even my large companies don't understand. The numbers they have to run on the stage, maybe it's the most important day to uh, at least break even. If you haven't got that, you know, it's just really going nowhere. Um, yeah. and, and coming back to this extra, you know, to your point about the lab and extra product, um, to, to generate some more sales, don't discount this an extra value. If you've got this lab, you've got, you, know, you, can, you can do that. So, uh, wholeheartedly, agree that's a really good point. Great, great. So, um, so what would you suggest? I mean, we've been talking about some tips about adapting, about you know, creating a, a value ladder of products where you have different products and services that fit different budgets of your customers. Um, are there any other tips that you would give business owners at this at this point in time? You know, especially maybe business owners who have lost um, a lot of work, maybe through you know, obviously their corporate audience, um, you know, might have just stopped kind of contracts with them, um, you know, or, you know, that, that kind of situation. Got any sorts of tips that would be specifically for them that would be helpful? Yeah, and I suppose it starts with, you need ideas. You know, the thing we all need always, the idea of putting through, uh, you know, sifting through our own um, circumstances and situation, and, and that, that's the only thing that can drive us forward. So I would say, you know, communicate and run out and listen. You know, talk to everybody you can. And I mean, you know, your clients, your suppliers, the government, you know, loads so much advice from everywhere. Your trade associations, you've got them, you know, the guy who 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 delivers your online shopping, you know, all of your network. Listen to them, you know, talk to everybody. Your 
run your, your issues through them, find out what they think, because they think they can all tell you something. And, and uh, as I say, you sort of come to your own conclusions, but from that, you'll have the best, uh, the highest number of ideas uh, that you can um, then turn into a, a business plan. Um, right. What I would say as well is, um, you know, while I'm doing that, now is the time to re engineer your business. I don't want to throw everything out and start again, but before you make any compromise, before you decide what you're going to keep and what you're not, get yourself a strategy together. It's a limited strategy, it's not too perfect. Work out where you go, and only with any compromise, make a compromise to decide what you're keeping, what you're working, what you're constructing, and so on to go forward. Uh, the problem is if you start with compromise, you can get rid of it. Now, it's a really good opportunity to start with that. Yes, you have to make compromise and start to go to lab and start again immediately, but mm. you will work as compromises and get the system to yourself a much better opportunity and much better business than you have in the past. Yes, I think I really agree with you on that. I think that that's really important, especially if you're in a position where um, your business has been delivered face to face um, and that's been going on for a long period of time. This is a real opportunity to create. Uh, a different way of working that gives your business a bit more stability in the longer term, no matter what happens, whether the face-to-face -face is no longer, um, you know, becomes a situation like currently we've had where it's not, not possible to do. Um, but whatever the issue is, whether it's, you know, face-to-face -face that's stopping you or it's something else, just give, giving the business that some grounding, that stability. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think sorry, Shelley, yeah. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, um, yeah, and that brings me down to technology. Um, um, and this really ties into the learning point as well. I think we've got to put a lot of effort. You've got to have a plan to develop yourself and everybody to keep up with technology. It's, you know, until fairly recently, a lot of people, you know, including people like myself, you know, of, uh, of, of my years, could get away with a sort of very cursory, you know, surface knowledge of. Uh, Technology, we all need a much bigger understanding of that. You know, the heat training, um, what is yourself, but you know, you need to be there. Um, and uh, you know, and of course, that actually that brings that brings me on to another area just talking about adaptive ability and that is developing people. Mm. It, it's never been so crucial as now, you know, now compared to, to, to any previous time to really develop people. And I would suggest, you know, don't think about it, you know, certainly think about. Training program, but really think about multi skilling. Talk to all of the employees, talk to um, the whole team, and work out what they really want, what they really like to do, as well as what they really need. And think about, you know, now you've got this strategy going, this ability strategy going forward, think about succession. Um, there's nothing like you can throw yourself forward several years and work out what bigger position you're going to need, you're going to need supervisors, managers, directors. Um, nothing like taking people on, on training programs now to give them a chance of taking those. Plans. First of all, you know, you'll you, you get motivation and commitment uh, from the team, like, like you won't believe the fact that uh, you know, you're helping them develop uh, much higher earning potential and much more satisfactory. Um, but also, you know, yeah, there's nothing, I guess, I say, you develop not higher, there's nothing riskier. Hiring, uh, you know, fairly big people in an organisation. Months of financial benefit, uh, huge cost, and the damage is wrong. Is uh, is to be absolutely devastating. So you can develop your own people. It's just, it's just good all that, and it's uh, the right thing to do as well. That's I think that's a really good point, um, I, and I really love that you brought that up because I know that that is something that you are particularly were particularly skilled at as CEO of a number of companies, you're very good at building up the people in the teams, making sure that they've continued to grow and develop and you know, be able to be amazing employees for, you, for your business and continue to grow the business as well. Um, I've, you know, I see that also in my own business as well, even though I work with primarily contractors, I see that the more communication we have, the, the more um, encouragement 
and clarity they have around what the goals and vision is of the business and how they can play a big part in that and how it can help them you know and what they actually want to achieve and grow and learn in um, the more I see that it, it contributes you know they're excited they want to be involved but then also the end result is is much much more powerful so I totally understand what you're saying that yeah absolutely and I've been absolutely amazed at the ideas that we get from people if, if they know they're not going to get shot for trying things and you know, taking yeah. the risks the ideas that they'll come up with you know you, you could never you could never do it like and uh, yeah that's really 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 cool Growth for the future, and uh, of course, you'll have a much better than I Absolutely, that, that's something else I wouldn't mind mentioning. You know, come back to it after a little bit. And uh, it, it, a large part of it, especially at the moment, where we're, we're in such isolation, um, is to do with mindset. And it's you know, a lot of I say, as much as much of people's performance, uh, it comes down to you know, how they feel and how they think, as much as. So many people in the last few weeks who have sort of dropped into overwhelm, uh, fear, fear of, of the unknown, almost um, paralyzed, paralyzed or, or just holding that because they're heading to town and they're letting the city wash over them. Um, and, and this brings me back to the communication aspect. You, know, you can't do that for the moment so to keep the networks open, talk to anybody and everybody. Absolutely, great, great tips there. And what do you feel is the first step that business owners need to take to secure their business into the future? Um, it, okay, it's a combination of a lot of things I've, I've spoken about. I suppose it comes down to having a strategy. Um, and I'm not, I'm not talking about something that's protecting something. I'm not talking about uh, you know you would always be saying that you know a plan. Uh, it's, it's, it's out as soon as the battle starts, it's completely out of date. Um, it's the planning process that's important. So, develop a strategy, um, no matter how ragged it is, you know, that's definitive, you can refine it over time, but then take some action. Yeah. Um, and as you take action, A, you feel stronger, you feel better, you know, the troops have something to follow. Um, and from that, you the information starts to come out, you know, how you. Um, how you and you refine that and make it better. So a, a, a strategy, to further that down to the strategy, take action, and that's and that's the way to get it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great piece of advice. Just just put a strategy together and then start taking action. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because a lot comes in once you start doing that, once you actually start shifting into getting clear on what you're going to do and then actually doing it. The sort of um, how the the answers come as you start. I find you know you have the idea, you start moving towards it. You may not be that sure about how it's going to work out, um, you, you know, but you, you find that as you start implementing, the answers come. As you start actually taking steps towards it, your self belief grows, and you, your confidence grows, and your ability to see the outcome that you're going to realise that grows as you actually start the steps. So, I love that. Yeah. It's really it good. No, that's a really good point. And I think, you know, what I would say is uh, make sure you have regular planning sessions and include the team as well. And the point you made there is absolutely right. I think the fact that you've been through, it's not the plan, it's the planning process. You talk about where your resources fit, where you're short, you know, you talk about which process you can do, you talk about, um, you know, or how, how your company fits into the plan. You've thought through all of this. You may not have answers, but you're right. Having, got this jigsaw in your head and then take action 
these names are a whole, a whole world of information and how it fits into the different board and that sort of stuff. This is planned, planned regularly. And you see everybody yeah. in the Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what I've been doing with my five, free five day challenge that, is, um, oh, that I just goodness. made the big announcement about today. Um, yeah, we've been having kind of planning meetings and endless spreadsheets <laughs> for like the last month. Um, and there's still, you know, there's still more going on to the planet every single day of what we need to do. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's a process. It's so overwhelming when you start, when you're thinking about it. But as you start planning it out, putting on the spreadsheet, the launch plan, start getting the other bits together, it's, it starts to, it becomes like a, a train and you're sort of, the, the train starts moving and some of the motive, the actual movement just comes along the way naturally after you get going. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'd love you to share a bit about how people can contact you if they have, you know, if they would like to know more about how you work, because um, I, you know, you, you're an amazing business coach and I know, I, I know a lot of people listening um, might be very interested in finding out how they could work to, with you. So what's the best way of people getting in touch with you, Lawrence? Uh, any, any way you want it. Uh, I'm on the LinkedIn page. Uh, in my about section, you'll find uh, my mobile number, you'll find my uh, email address, uh, either that or through LinkedIn, however you want. Uh, I do have an ebook that's uh, available for anybody to drop me a, a line uh, by email. I shall return that 50 pages. Uh, includes Lovely. some of the stuff I've talked about, a whole whole load more. Really good uh, sort of checklist and I'll be able to document that. Get that to, uh, anybody that, uh, that is interested. Fantastic. So, just for, for anyone looking for you on LinkedIn, it's Lawrence Good, which is with an E on the end. So, right. Lawrence yeah. and then G O O D E. Um, and you can find Lawrence on LinkedIn. I will actually post your LinkedIn profile link onto um, the comments section if anyone wants to connect up with Lawrence. Oh, okay. If I give you my, I'll give my mobile and I can do that. Yeah, I've got I've got those details. I can pop them into the of comment course, section. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if anyone has any questions that they would ask to like to ask Lawrence, um, and just pop them into the comment section. I'll see if we have some questions for you. That's all right. There's no problem. So we. Oh, brilliant. So Fiona's saying it's been great information. Thank you so much. That's great. That's fab. Oh, fab. Good. So we haven't got any questions at the moment, but you're in the group as well. So if other people are watching this after, once the recording is over um, and they want to comment or ask anything, then um, I'm sure Lawrence will be able to respond to you or I'll be able to respond to you in the group as well. So thank you. Oh so much for agreeing to do this interview Lawrence it's been so helpful um, and you know I, I think that this I knew that you would be the right person to be able to provide some some clear direction to help um, business owners during this time um, because this is really an exceptional time isn't it in terms of opportunity there is a lot of opportunity at this time um, even though it well, might seem the other way <laughs> very no, that's a very good point don't lose time yet it's really hard but exactly exactly and it's just trying to get into the right frame of mind to be able to see what that opportunity is for your business yeah. fantastic yeah. fantastic so um thank you guys who joined us live and if you're watching the recording thank you for joining us um we are going to be going live for a second interview today at three o'clock with vicky edrington and we're going to be talking about all things free challenges and how you can use challenges in order to fill your programs. So join us later today for that. Um, and all I need today is a big thank you to Lawrence. Thank you so much. Um, this has been such a good interview. Um, and I'm so glad that, to have the opportunity and the chance to um, have you share your wisdom with everyone here. Um, and yeah, sorry. It's, go ahead. it's been a pleasure. Uh, Action Coach has a, a mantra everybody will be able to hear it or not, but if there are questions, if there are any listening, all the friends and family are more than happy uh, you know, to, 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 to help with uh, no contact. And thanks very much for doing that. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thanks so much. All right. Great to see you guys. And I will see you a little bit later on today at three o'clock.